Hi, Terry here. Welcome to another video. Uh, I'm going to tack this video into my playlist on making homemade black powder for use as a propellant in antique muzzle loaders. And it's why your black powder sucks. Okay, now your black powder may not suck. And if it doesn't, then great. You're doing it right. But this is for those people who are maybe new to making their own black powder propellant at home. And uh, maybe they're just not getting the performance that you think you should be getting. You know, um, you're pretty sure maybe you're doing everything that the rest of us are doing, but the performance of your product just may not be up to the standards of, say, GoX. Well, it's extremely difficult to just stand here and say, oh, okay, this, this is your problem or this is your problem. Do this, do that, it's fixed and go forward. There are so many variables involved that can negatively impact the performance of black powder when it's being used as a propellant in antique muzzle loaders. However, <clears throat> there are some common themes that go on through this, some common problems and causes that you might run into. And I'm going to cover some of those today. Now, this is not an all-inclusive list, and it may not be in order of importance, but um, it's just some of the more common problems that you might run into. And if you are having this problem, what you can do about it. So, number one is not density. That's where most people jump to. They immediately say, oh, your problem is uh, most likely your density. Actually, I don't think that's a big problem, and I'm going to talk about that coming up next. Uh, I think the biggest problem that people, especially new to making black powder, are going to have is moisture content. I think that's going to be the biggest, most common problem most people are going to run into. It's incredibly difficult to stress just how important moisture content is to the performance of black powder. It takes very, very, very little water in a black powder mix to reduce its burn rate by 50% even. Now, I personally made some black powder. I tested it out, and it burned it like, say, one-tenth of a second. And then after putting it back into a dehydrator for another 48 hours, it tested out at 0 0.06 seconds. Well, you might think that four hundredths of a second isn't really all that much. It's almost twice as fast. So just by drying it out more, I bumped the burn rate up, you know, twice as fast. So the thing that's important to remember in this is that the sulfur and the charcoal don't normally draw moisture from the air, but potassium nitrate is hygroscopic, which means it does. So even just the humidity while you're making the stuff can be absorbed into it and can affect the, um, the performance of the powder. Now, some of the, the, the causes of this, well, you might measure out your potassium nitrate just out of the bag when you buy it, and in which case it's going to have some water in it. And then when you dry it later, you dry some of that water out that you initially included in the weight of the potassium nitrate, which now means you have less potassium nitrate than you thought you had. So you might measure out 75 grams potassium nitrate, and you're yada yada, you put everything together, you press it, and then when you grind it up and you're drying it, you actually end up with 68 grams, maybe 69 grams of potassium nitrate. The rest of that 75 grams was water. And that's going to change your mix ratio. And that's one way moisture content can affect the performance of your black powder. So be sure and dry your potassium nitrate before weighing it. Put it in a dehydrator, under a heat lamp, out in the sun, do something with it, make sure you get all that water out, then weigh it, then put it together. Another way too much moisture can be uh, introduced into the black powder mix is when you're pressing it. It's, again, kind of hard to stress just how little moisture it takes to add back into that mix before compressing. Now, the reason we compress is we want to squeeze that uh, 
those chemicals, the potassium nitrate, the, uh, the charcoal, and the sulfur, together just as close as we can get them. And that speeds up the chemical reaction when it burns. And it also makes it more resistant to absorbing moisture because there's less space between the ingredients. And that just kind of makes sense, right? But it takes very, very, very little water. All you need to do is just take the dust down. When you take it out of the ball mill, it's really fine, it's powdery, it's dusty, right? So you need to add just enough water so that when you stir it up with a spoon, half of it doesn't go up into the air as dust. And it takes a lot less than you think. Again, because what you're seeing as dust is going to be mostly charcoal, and it doesn't absorb water very well. So you could put some water in, you can stir it up. Oh, it's got a little dust in it still. Put some more water in, stir it up. There's still a little bit of dust. Put a little more water in, stir it up. Okay, now it's good. Yeah, except you probably added too much already. Add a few drops, stir it, stir it up again, stir it up some more, stir it some more, stir it some more. And if it's still a little too dusty, add just a tiny bit more, a few more drops. And then do the same thing again. Stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it. So how do you know if you got too much water? Well, when you're pressing, if you get no water at all, squeeze out is ideal, but if you get a teeny tiny amount, like one little drop of clear water squeezes out of your mold, okay, that's okay. But remember that while the charcoal and the sulfur themselves don't actually dissolve in water, they can be held in suspension, but they don't dissolve, potassium nitrate does. So when you see any water squeezing out of your mold, that water has potassium nitrate in it. And so you're losing potassium nitrate. And again, you're changing your mix ratio. But a little drop or two isn't going to hurt it. But if you're getting mud out of the sides of your mold when you squeeze it, yeah, you're probably adding too much water. You probably want to back off a little bit. So again, you could try that. If you think you might be squeezing too much water out, just try it again, and this time, use less water. Number two, now we go to density. Now, the reason I didn't list density as the first problem, because that's where most people do list as the first problem, is that my powder that I make is not as dense as GoX, and mine performs equally as well or better as GoX. Powder that's a little bit less dense than a GoX will generally burn a little cleaner. Van Gogh X. So, density. How will that affect your performance? Well, it can because, again, remember, back when we're pressing, right, we're squeezing those chemicals just as tightly as we can. We're shrinking the volume down. That's increasing the density per given volume. So, generally speaking, the more dense your finished powder is, the more it weighs per, say, cubic centimeter the faster it's going to burn because the tighter everything is squeezed together. Now, that's generally speaking, but there are other factors to consider. My, uh, my powder tests out at about two-thirds the density. Between a half and two-thirds depends, varies from batch to batch. And again, mine burns just as good as, as GoX. And as in the last test that I did on performance, it performed better than GoX. Here's the big problem I think that a lot of people have is it is so much of the density of your powder is it's how you're measuring it out. If you've got a measure and you calibrate it to 50 grams of GoX, okay, now you pour your own powder in, you fill it up, only your powder is not as dense as GoX, you don't have 50 grains in that measure. You're going to have less. You might have 40. You might have 35, you might have 45. You're not going to have 50 though, because your powder is not as dense. So a, the same volume of your powder is not going to weigh the same as the same volume of GoX. So you've got a scale that's calibrated for GoX. You fill it with your less dense powder, pour it down the barrel of your muzzle loader. You've actually got less powder per weight than Go X, and so it's going to be a lighter charge, and you're going to get lighter performance. So anytime you're going to change powders, you've got to recalibrate 
your measures per the density of that powder. Now, if you might think density is your problem, then the only real answer is to upgrade your press. If you're going with a 10 or a 15 ton press and you really believe you're going to need more density, then you're just going to have to upgrade your press. You're going to have to build or buy a 50 ton press, for example. Some people double press their powder. I, I've tried it. It hasn't done anything for me at all. But other people have. They, they, what you do is you, you compress your puck. And then while it's still wet, you grind it up. And then you immediately compress it again. Again, I've tried that. And it hasn't done anything for me. I'm, I'm not impressed with it. But uh, other people swear by it. It works for them. So you can try that out if you want to. Be a lot cheaper than upgrading to a 50 ton press. Number three, the type of wood that you're using to make your charcoal. Exactly. One of the reasons that my powder with a lighter density can outperform GoX is that I'm using a better grade of charcoal. GoX uses maple for their charcoal. I use red, red cedar, which is a lighter wood. And so it, it's going to make a faster burning charcoal, especially when it's under compression. Red cedar is not the best you can use. Um, buckthorn alder, willow. I've heard uh, dried grapevines. I'm going to try that out. Work really well. Mimosa, I've heard, is just a tad under willow. Also, just recently, I saw somebody. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out here. Everything Black Powder YouTube channel, Ed McBain, the presenter made some charcoal from toilet paper and it was the fastest burning best most powerful charcoal he'd ever made well the black powder was not the charcoal but the charcoal used from the toilet paper to make the black powder itself produced the most powerful black powder he'd ever made as of the making of that video so <laughs> i'm definitely going to try that out so um yeah go uh, go over to everything black powder check out that video it's it's amazing I'm at a loss, as he was when I saw the video, um, I'm at a loss for an explanation for why that is. Um, why would toilet paper, I mean, you assume that they're just using cheap wood pulp, all right, probably leftover pulp from making all kinds of paper, probably pine or mostly pine. Why it would produce such good black powder, I don't know. Um, I've definitely got to try that myself. But again, my point is that it's all to play for. It's all open. You can try pine cones, pine needles, dried leaves, newspapers, toilet paper, all kinds of wood to make black powder. And that, even with a lower density, can bump the performance of your powder up enough to match or better GoX. Uh, other factors that can come into play are how do you make your powder? Are you getting a 100% conversion in your charcoal, for example? Is your charcoal maybe contaminated? Ideally, in your retort, you want to maintain an internal temperature of 600 degrees Fahrenheit until it stops smoking. That can depend entirely on how large your retort is, how tightly it's packed, you know, the heat source and blah, blah, blah. But that can affect the quality of your finished product. So can the, the starting uh, purity of your potassium nitrate, the, the type of sulfur that you're using, it just can go on and on. So those are really going to be the most common problems that you're likely to run into in poor performance of making your own black powder propellant for use in a muzzle loader firearm. As always, keep in mind that this uh, playlist and series of videos is presented for educational and entertainment purposes only. I in no way encourage anybody to attempt to make your own black powder. Uh, it is listed as an explosive, not a propellant. So, uh, thanks for watching. Be sure and click on the uh, like, subscribe, share buttons you know how that works and uh almost got a thousand subscribers by the way the last time i just checked i was 972 
That is outstanding. So thanks. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.